Well, here I am with Valor, and I want to do a whole hoof trimming today, but if I don't get to, that's okay. We'll get to it maybe tomorrow or the next day, but what I want to do is I want to go through each foot. I want to uh, do one foot, maybe two a day, and do a video, do the mapping, do the markups, um, <clears throat> evaluate each foot and each heel individually and show you what what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to develop, what I'm trying to understand um, in restoring the feet to my horse that are not fully restored that yet since he was three. Okay, when I started learning barefoot trimming, and he was two, three, four, somewhere in there, I can't remember, 2005, it started with me just taking the heels back, but then of course everything grew and um, I learned the Strother method through Cheryl Henderson of ABC Hoof Care um, to totally take down the heels to the periopal flap, which is one and one, one and one fourth inch. Um, is it one? No, it's not one and one fourth. I wish it would have been one and one eighth or something like that. But to the bottom of the periopal flap, and uh, decimated my horse's feet. Trimmed the heels out. He was growing. And so internally, the heel itself is actually crushed forward. So I will have a bit of a problem getting the heels that look like they're run forward to really come back, but actually they're just growing as um, his, his actual heel got crushed. But the cartilages are huge and have been restored. Um, the cartilages look great. I'll give you this here. Okay, this is the cartilage right here. Okay, this is what, when you trim this heel here, um, this gets pulled down and rounded and shortened and your heels wind up here. <laughs> okay, what's that doing to these horses? Okay, so as you grow this wall back in that was like this, then these cartilages are lifted up off the ground where they're supposed to be. But, as you see, when I come back this way, and this thing too, when you're taking pictures, you can come straight from the side like this, but you're still not quite getting a perfect side profile. So you just keep coming back over like this and kind of turning the camera like that and aiming it towards the foot until you just barely see that other bulb on the other side. See the other bulb coming into view there? Bring it back like this. And that way you can get a perfect idea of what the truth of what is going on, a perfect side shot here, profile shot. Really be able to see the cartilages, how much they're released, um, how far your heel may be crushed forward. That, that, but this is what I think. I think that these horn tubules will eventually still kick these horn tubules in the heels up. But besides that, some of this is going to fill in with frog. Okay. Okay, these are the heels to the foot you just saw. As you'll notice, the uh, sole platform in the heel is full of live sole. He's got an inch thick of live sole filling up the heels to protect the back of the heels of the inner foot. Um, I keep the frog purposely down and cut out for the purpose that the foot is still expanding uh, the frog is still moving. There's still some correction to be done. I don't want the frog holding the foot up. And so when all is said and done, the frog will be allowed to grow. The frog grows uh, connected to the heels um, to fill up this space here. So uh, I'm here today. I have my bucket of water. And I, yesterday I brought him in, I washed the feet real well, and I took pictures of all his feet already. That in and of itself can be intense. I will also scrub the pastern up here. That way you're not getting scratches. And keep their pasterns nice and clean as well. So then I'll scrub everything with the brush real good. And I have a towel so I can dry it off as well if I need to. Okay. Well, I really wanted to, I actually I did, I trimmed the frog because I really wanted you to see how I trimmed the frog. And then the recording did not come out. So I'm just going to have to show you the frog and then uh, you'll see the frog already pretty much trimmed. I'll still be trimming up a little bit of it. 
Um, but one thing I also wanted to notice here um, is that, boy, my heels are sure a different length on each side. And I think what happened, well, I know what happened. Uh, this has been one of Valor's problems feet. Very stiff, upright on the inside, and very run forward on the outside. Very asymmetrical, much wider on the outside. Well, uh, I, the last time I trimmed him, I really set it up to kick those horn tubules back. And so that is exactly what happened. All the horn tubules on that outer side kicked back and kicked that heel up. And so that's why that heel seems so much longer because in reality it was longer, but it was also run forward. And I had lowered the other side to try and balance the foot out. Because when one heel is run forward, even if the heels are the same length from the hairline to the end of the heel or the bottom of the collateral groove to the end of the heel, the run forward heel will set that side of the foot lower. So the object is to lower the other heel, which will help balance the foot out. And uh, obviously it did work because uh, it kicked this whole side back and in. And so that is why this side is longer. Okay, so um, what you'll see as the video starts is that I've already trimmed, I've already found the apex of the frog. And I've already trimmed up quite a bit of the frog and made a central sulcus. Really clean that out in there. Okay. Now, here we go. We're going back here. Now, I've got this little knife here, too, that I really like, um, which gets in the collateral groove right there. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna kind of trim off the back here. Okay. So I do want to take off a little more of the tip of that. Okay, now. I don't like there to be sharp edges. The frog corium is not shaped with a sharp with a sharp edge. You know, when you come straight down like this and take off the side, then you have a sharp edge, right? A corner. I want that to kind of be rounded. See? Take that off like so. I'm going to be feeling it. How soft is it getting? I want the frog to be flyable. Okay, now I'm going to make a central sulcus in there too because he does not have one and he should have one right here. And I'm thinking this frog here may be a little thicker than it needs to be if his heels are going to release. So I'm going to see what's going on there. Put down for a second and think about it. His cartilages are still not full. That means his heels are bent under. That means his his frog could be bent up in the foot. Sometimes they pooch out. Sometimes they bend up. I don't know really what's going on with him, but I am going to uh, open up a central sulcus here on this foot. My knives back here and see what's going on here. Okay, give me a foot. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. Okay, you see how he has no central sulcus there. We're going to make one. This 
is why I like double-sided knives. This one ain't a double-sided knife, but it's real sharp, so. Now, I've opened up his central sulcus. There. Okay. Because that can get totally, it, it's supposed to have that, a slight gap in it. There. It's supposed to be full of frog. There is not supposed to be a crack all the way up and it's supposed to have a gap. And so that can get full, compressed, and then your frog is not gonna move like you want it to. No, 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 come on. Okay, let's get another knife. Do a little more trimming right here. Right there, I'm down to where I can see the collateral groove. Let's do it over here on this side. That way you can really see what's going on with the bars. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm down to all live frog. Now I see what's really going on with these bars. Now when I map, I'll be able to trim the bars correctly and find out what's really bar. Like this here, this is not real bar right here. Bar ends right about here, I think, right here. So, you see how when this frog fills up the collateral groove, it'll push the bar over. If your bar's already pushed over and growing that way, and you got a flare on this side and a run forward heel, that's not going to help it if uh, that's like that. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up my sole a little bit and my bars just a hair I'm going to come in here and get right up next to the wall right up next to the wall now you may not have sole this horse has a lot of it okay so you may not be doing what I'm doing here now one thing that happens is that many times the sole sticks more to the toe Okay, so you have to come in there and you have to learn to manage the sole in the toe. Now see that's exfoliatable there. See how I'm coming right up to the wall? I'm going to go ahead and take off a little bit of this bar and clean it up. You just follow it down the bar line. Look at that. See, that's not supposed to be there. So I'm going to come around, so you can't hardly see what I'm doing there. I'm just going to come around and do it like this, real short. I don't want to impale myself. 
There we go. Okay, me gotta rest. So I'm just cleaning up the soil. I'm getting ready to map. Sometimes I'll even rasp my walls down before I even map. Um, but you may map. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll map and then I'll trim and then I'll map again. And then I'll do a, um, you know, clean up and then I'll map again. See, I'm just kind of cleaning things up here. See it come in here? Look at how. See how you can use that? See how you can take just a little thin, look, see, the exfoliatable sole there? So I'm going to come clear over in here. Right up against the wall, see there? That's, that's hoop wall there. I'm going to take it. Just go down that bar wall. Again, I'm just cleaning the foot up here. And I might rasp down the walls, almost level with the sole, and then map. Okay, now I'm going very shallow, and I'm just taking off the very bar wall. And you want to come clear up here into the corner and get this corner cleaned out. See there? up in through here like that let's get that little bit of black out of there it's kind of deep okay so that's how I, I've got that foot cleaned up now you can either map it before or map it after and then map it again See, because the mapping also teaches you. I can do this without mapping right away because I'm going to map it to show you what to do. And I will map it when I trim it. Um, but for you that are learning, you know, uh, professional trimmers can't do this all the time. But they learn to recognize what is what on the foot. Um, all right. So i got to decide what I want to do next. And... I have decided that I'm going to wrap the wall down. Almost level with the sole. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Just a minute here. We're going to get some markers. Some markers. I'm going to mark stuff. Now the sole and the foot, a lot of times it's concave, but sometimes isn't. And that makes a difference in what you can do as well. So I got all these wonderful markers here. Okay, so let's use, let's see what we got here. Here, give it here. Okay, so we see, I'm, it now, wait a minute, now here's the white line, which is really yellow, right here, where the sole and the wall are joined together, and you got it on the bar too, like so, see there? There you go. Now, then next to the sole, or next to the white line, here's the sole. We're going to mark it with green. Here's your heel. 
This is all heel. This is the sole platform of the hill. This is the sole ridge. Look, right here, it gets concave right here. See there? So we're gonna come in here next to white line. Again, this is the heel, the sole platform of the heel. All in here. Just a minute. And I'm gonna, I don't want, I want to take this wall down. I'm gonna show you different ways there. See, I could have uh, took it a little more with that, with the knife, all right? So I've got about a fourth of an inch of wall here. Um, you can nip it or you can rasp it off. I'm gonna show you how to rasp it off. If he will hold his foot up here like he's supposed to. Okay. Do it light. Let the rasp do the work. See there? Okay. Now here, I made a mistake here. From here, up through here, do not rasp this wall. Okay, I need to mark this. Now I can, I'm gonna have to rasp some of this, but this is specific. You gotta leave more wall here, high above the sole, than you do here, okay? And I, okay, so, here we go. Now, I've got it pretty flat here, but I'm not taking any uh, uh, right over here. Now, over here. above the sole in the heels okay I gotta rest for a minute okay get up here just take your time see how it's flat I'm gonna turn it over. Nah, 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 nope. I'm gonna go this way. Keep it as flat as you can. Okay, now it's almost level with the stall. Still up there a little bit. You want to keep as much of the strength of the actual wall supporting whatever sole you have as you can. And yet you also have to take off the hard outer horn tubules. Um, you know, the jury is out on some of this stuff on how to deal with these horses with really thin sole to support uh, the sole and yet to uh, be doing enough corrective trimming to where you're gonna make a difference as well so there's like this fine line okay now I see see I'm right to the sole there right here it's high so I'm taking that down
Up, oh, see, I touched the sole right there. See how the mark come off? Now see, what I want is uniform sole ridge thickness as much as possible. You know, I'll sit it down, I'll look at it from up here too, because um, I'm looking at the growth rings, I'm looking at the horn tubules, the horizontal, uh, gro the horizontal growth rings and the vertical horn tubules. Um, I'm looking at the shape of the foot. You know, if it's a front foot, it's a little more oval. If it's a round foot, if it's a back foot, it's a little more spade. Um, how you trim up this part of the foot depends on whether you're going to have a, a foot capsule that a hoof capsule that really fits or one where the sole has gone out and taken over and given you a round foot. See how spade shaped his foot is? Okay. So. Starting to take off a little bit of that. I'm gonna come straight across here. See how we got there? I wanna take off every bit of that paint. And then I know my toe is pretty flat. See there? Now I'm taking this down without taking the heel down, really. But I don't wanna take off all the height of this wall right here because I do want it to be weighted so that it will first of all it's going to help this heel grow um, and then it's going to push the growth up into the capsule there okay so quit okay so that's what that looks like Now, what I could do is I could start to take this off, watch here, to where I'll just barely take off the width, both the width and the thickness of the marker, which is what? Not much, right? The thickness of that marker. So here we go. there now let's do it on the other side too now look at the width of the sole ridge and then look how it goes concave here because the foot is crescentric it grows a convex sole ridge and then right here it gets crescentric and that's what I call the bowl of the sole and you want to learn to read this and look for uniformity Now you may not have any sole ridge like this. There we go. See there? Now, I can go and take more of this here. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do from here back and from here back yet. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there for now. Now you'll notice that this heel is run forward and this side is out. You'll also notice that the, the sole platform there is more hollowed out. It's more hollowed out where this one is more uh, full. And this seems to be a common, common thing. But as this comes in, then this side will get more full too. You see how this bar is laid over? Everything's going out forward and out. 
that's what these aren't real flares it's where the heel has run been trimmed out the wall run forward pooched out bulged out looks like a flare but isn't okay actually I changed my mind on this um, at the time I really didn't realize that the whole side had been kicked back and the heel had been kicked up and so the heels were basically um, at the same angle but this side was longer now and so it was higher and further out making it look like what I just said um, that the heel was run forward so ultimately in the end after I map the foot because you see I'm just getting the foot ready to map here this is what I decided to do and as I said you can map then you can clean up and trim and then you can map again <laughs> so anyway but I decided not to map I just went ahead and cleaned the frog up and uh, got the bars started in their basic direction um, got the sole cleaned up got the wall leveled down um, to the sole um, but what I'm going to wind up doing here is uh, when I notice that the heels are the same angle as you'll see you got to be able to change your mind as you go because you everything has a counterfeit on these hooves you always got to be willing to change your mind and what you think you're seeing um, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here and map. I'm going to lower this heel, and as I lower this heel, it's going to bring this whole side in. So just like when you uh, lower the toe, it also brings it back. Anytime you lower something, it brings it back, it brings it down, or it brings it in. A true flare is where the hoof wall separates in the lamina and flares out and pulls away from the foot. This is a bulge from the heel being trimmed too low on that side and that took away the stability and of course the horse the way he moves and stuff he pushed that heel forward and it pushed that wall out and it looks like flare um, so you can have two heels the same length the same length from here to here here to here but if this one is at more of an angle it will still be when the horse sets his foot down, it will still cause that side of the horse's foot to be lower. So you have to compensate a little bit and lower this heel a little more than this one. So that the horse's foot will stand balanced. And that way his hoof caps can start changing as well. Okay, now we're gonna map the foot. I have a protractor here. It's one that had an arm that went like this. It's real good, buy, buy it on Amazon. Um, and it's real thick, so it's nice. And then I have this sewing gauge, which makes a fabulous ruler. And a blue marking pin. Don't use red, because people think you're, you're drawing blood on your horse. Okay, so. So we're gonna map the foot now. Something I want to explain to you. Just a minute here. Let me get zoomed in. Okay. Okay, we want to mark. Here's the true apex, I hope. Okay. Anyway, right here, and right in the center of the frog, right here. And the first line that we want to make is going to be right down. No, you don't. Come on, quit. First one we're going to do is make right down the center of the foot right here. Okay. Okay, then we're going to measure from the true apex right here. Actually, I like to center up this I draw a line here and a line here on my protractor so I can center it up with this line so then I can draw me a, a line right across here that helps me see is this an equal part here with this here see pretty much except you know I have this foot not flare but bulge out here you know you're not being very helpful 
Okay, now I'm going to measure up here one and a half inches right to the white line right there. I'm going to center up my lines on there again. I'm going to come to the inside of the white line and I'm going to draw a line across my toe like this. Okay, that, now see the symmetry right there? This piece is the same shape as that piece. This piece is a little bit different than that piece. Now, I like to come to about where my bars should end. I don't always measure it or anything, but where my heels quarters are, and I like to draw. Well, see now, I didn't put that. You gotta put these lines there. Thank you, Baller, for teaching me patience. Because there's no reason for you to be doing that. Okay. So I'm going to draw a line here. Okay. That I don't think is even. It's not. Right there. And it's raining. So I'm going to have to quit. Okay. Next I'll do, I'll draw a line down here to the hairline, right where the hair grows up. Okay, now this is actually better for that. Put that right on the hairline there, and then I'll kind of roll it up like, like this. And that is right at um, one and a quarter inches. So I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna take that heel down. I'm gonna this one roll it down and this one is at two inches okay so I might I'm gonna go ahead and take this one down to uh, a little bit to I'm gonna mark anyway where it's the same height as this because actually they're about the same angle now so I think I can take this heel down a bit because I kind of want it now to be Maybe level with the other heel a bit. I don't know yet. I'm not done. I haven't made all my decisions. Ultimately, we're growing them to two inches, but we can't let it be so much above the sole that there's no sole between the bar and the buttress and the wall supporting it all. Okay. Put it up here. Okay, so I have my lines drawn. This is where uh, this heel from here to here would be the same length as from here to here. Now, what if I wanted to measure from the bottom of the collateral group from here, just from here to here? What, what is my heel there? That is about an inch, an inch and a fourth. What about over from here to here? Well, over, over here. I have about three quarters of an inches, of an inches through. Correction, the medial heel was actually an inch and three quarters from the hairline and three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the collateral groove, while the lateral heel was almost two and a quarter inches. Such a big discrepancy so that heel had really come back a lot okay he doesn't like laying why stand on the other foot because the walls are way above the sole because i haven't trimmed him in a while okay so, so give me the foot okay now i'm going to do my bars now right here Make a mark here and here on the side of your frog. Come to the insides. Let's see. Right there. Ah. Put my knee up here so you keep your leg here. And I'm going to mark right here and right here to there. See there? Now I'm going to come up here, right here to right here. There we go. 
So this t tells me where I want to take my bar down to. And I'm probably going to take some of this heel down to, too. Because now his heels are about the same angle. So if I keep this long, that's just going to be detrimental. Before, they weren't like that. Um, that heel was way, way more run forward and at way more of an angle. Now I can decide what I'm going to do here. Okay, so... Thank goodness I'm recording. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm the the actor, the cast, and the crew. Me and Valor are the actors. And it's no act. This is a true life story. Okay. Give me a foot. Alright. Um, I've decided I'm going to leave this heel the way it is. It is right at, what did I say? Measure twice, cut once. I put it right on the hairline and kind of roll it up there. Wide at one and three quarters. This one. This one is, I put it on there, I roll it up. Oh gosh. Right to where the hair starts to go up. That is right at, uh, it's over two. <laughs> so let's just make them even this time. Just a minute. The other one was one and three quarters. Okay, right here where my bar line is, is one and three quarters. So that's where I'm going to take this heel down to. Now, you don't do this. Okay? It's like this. It's precision. And you want to get this part here down. Okay, be watching as the marking lines disappear from the sole. That way you can tell how deep you're getting. This foot is straightened up a lot. I'm going to take all this. See how it's taking out the marker? taking this down I'm also taking that flare in well it's not a flare but you know what I mean that bulge um, it's straightened up a lot and so uh, the heels are almost the same angle so I can take that heel down to about match the other one and I can also take down the quarter and all the way up to the pillar as well and so that's going to really help this foot. Um, it's becoming way more symmetrical on both sides. Now I've been waiting for it to do this. Okay, notice how it's starting to look the same over here as it does over there. There we go, it's right to there. Okay, now I'm going to take down some of this right here, too. Just a little bit. Hey, do you see my sole ridge line there? Well, I might have beveled that a little bit too much. I might have gone like that instead of straight. There we go. Take a little more. Now he's got a lot of soul. I'm not telling you to do this. You're probably going to leave that marking that I had there to begin with. And I've got soft ground out here. Um, wow, my foot has really straightened up. I am super happy. Now see, I messed up over here a little bit because I was angled like this. I should have been flat like this. 
So technically this now has a bevel. I didn't really want it to have that. I'm gonna take this toe down a little bit. There we go. Again, he's got a sole ridge and I've got soft ground. He's got a lot of sole and a thick sole ridge. That's what you see, that white rim around there in the sole. That's the sole ridge. Wow, his foot is looking really good. Now I'm gonna read the growth rings from above here and see if they're symmetrical and in alignment with the inner foot. If you stand up there, dude. Yeah, let's take that. Come here, quick. So I'm getting up here in front and I'm looking, and boy, that's looking pretty good. Um, and actually, that bevel I made isn't going to hurt because I kind of needed to do that anyway. Um, but you want to do it on purpose, not by accident. As much as possible, you're trying to rest flat, not at an angle. And I, the way I was pulling that rasp over, um, I was at an angle. So the wall was actually lower than the sole. You're trying to make the wall and sole level with one another. Well, I'm just really happy with this foot. Okay, but... Okay, Mitter. Give me here. Yep, see what I did? I did, I went like this instead of flat. Now I'm gonna look and see. Yeah. Well, I wish I wouldn't have done that. See, I would want this this wall to be flat, right up flush with the bottom of this rasp here. And instead it's like that. See? So the other side almost and I'm gonna have to work on that so you want to try not to do that okay I made this side too low and I put uh, like a whole scoop in the whole side but um, that's not really what I wanted to do okay well a couple days it should be gone all right okay now this heel is pretty level with that heel. Go ahead and take one more little bit. There we go. See, I should have been more straight like this so that this wall was not like that. This is an art form, believe you me, and I'm not the best artist. Okay, but I think in the long run, um, that's probably going to wind up helping that foot out a little bit because that side still needs some correction, has some horde tubules that need to push back. Um, the heel is still contacting the ground. It's just in the quarter there that I trimmed it pretty, pretty at a bevel. Not the kind of bevel I like. I like, this is what I like. I like for the sole and the wall all to be flat and level together. Okay, and then if I want to bevel the wall, I'll take off the outside of the, of the horn tubules. That's what I'll do. Okay, so now we need to think about how do we um, actually, when we bevel the wall, bevel the wall. So I'm going to get some more markers. Here. Green. We'll just use green and yellow and purple. Those are good colors. I'll show you the different thickness of the wall here. Okay. So Here's the white line. The, this is the lamina of the hoof capsule and right there, see that? The hoof capsule and 
the laminar serum that shoots into it that connects the sole to it. Okay. This here, right here, the whitest white part, that is called the stratum internum. And it is the softest part of the hoof wall. And it's right up there next to the sole. See that? Okay. Now, if you got relatively tight rolls and you got a sole ridge, well, you got a sole ridge. It's just a matter of how good it is. That thing goes from here around here right here this area here is sole ridge and which I wouldn't have I wish I wouldn't have done that. okay ain't gonna kill him all right um, now this is the hardest part of the hoof wall here and this is the part I want to bevel purposely is this part out here and lightly and I also want to bring the toe back I don't want any leverage on this toe here I want this to round off here and these to blend in like so good right wrong and different that's okay here you see a perfect example of why you need to use a protractor to draw those lines across the toe or you will get them crooked to my eyes that looks straight this is why we need the protractor we need to line up the lines okay the toe here straight across to my line right there I'm just gonna take down don't ask me what angle I'm standing up here above the horse just going like that okay figure it out come back right to that yellow line there and I I go straight across but I'm also hitting these pillars see Notice how the green disappeared? Now I'm just going to knock off the very harder outer horn tubule. Just that a little bit because it's already off the ground so I don't need to do it too much. Okay, then I'm going to take and I'm going to take smaller teeth. Uh -uh. Round that off there. <sighs> then I'm going to let my horse rest because this is hard on him. Turn that thing around. You want to get the sharp edges off. Ah. Small teeth. Well, that's pretty much it. Right there. You can finish it off a little better, you know, so it's not no sharp edges. And uh, I do need to trim up them bars a little more. Remember, I trimmed them at the first, but then uh, I've lost all my knives. Where is that one really good sharp knife? Well, I will use my really crappy knife. Okay, give it here. Bar just a little lower than the heel. 
and strike. Because this ain't where the bar is really supposed to be. Okay, we're going to strike that one out too. Okay, get in the corner. don't cut your wrist. If you look up at the top there you really see how I put the toe off center so I'm gonna have to go correct that tomorrow. Um, I understood that as I did this video. Another thing I want to point out is the straightness of the bars. Really work on getting the bars straight, bringing them back, and that they're always gonna be till the foot is finished a little lower than the very end of the heel point and getting, uh, making sure that you get that real precise in there so that your heels will keep opening up and moving back. Okay, so we're gonna look at the layers of the hoof wall and then I'm gonna show you um, some other methods I use to try and clean up the soil. Now, water is your friend in corrective trimming because the foot needs to move. Now, ultimately, when you have the, the outer wall, which is the very hardest part, is barely beveled, it's still really supporting the sole here in a retaining wall fashion. And you have hoof wall to the level of the sole, or a little higher if you got thin sole. Here's where the concave part of the sole, because the sole is crescentric, starts right here. See, this is all concentric here. Well, this is concave, this is concave, and this is convex. Convex soil ridge, concave under, uh, under the very bottom of the cotton bone, which is right here. Um, the sole ridge is convex, like so. And so you've got, you got wall, and you got sole, and I don't know why your leg is so stiff today. Okay, now I'm going to show you some other ways to clean this up. Bought me one of these little doodads. I don't know if it works, but let's see. Might work. See? Maybe not. Doesn't work very good at all. Okay. But I know something that does work. And I'm going to use it. This baby here, Proxon with a grinding, uh, with a, a rasp disc on it. There we go. Oh, come on, loosen up. Want to wear a mask? Variable speed so you can turn it down. See? You can even do the frog with it. I need a little higher. And 
so that cleans up your soul pretty good. Now, I also use, this is a channels, it is a lightweight, four inch sanding disc grinder. Uh, you can teach yourself to use these. You can get an extension cord and put a dimmer switch on it and make it into a variable speed one. Of course, you're gonna have to teach your horse all this. You'd be surprised how they take to this though. Yeah, one that won't let you clip them will let you, let you do this. So I'm going to show you that. That's pretty good. Now sometimes I'll kind of finish up right there. There we go. Hope you can see that. You don't have to every single time clean up that soil, but it is a good idea to unclog it so it will keep loose and keep growing and keep moving as your hoof capsule and foot are wanting to move. Oh, God. So, I let it work on one foot and then I use the uh, DF Crosley's Tea Tree Recovery Spray. Okay, give it here. Of course, I would have this wrong. These videos are hard to make, I'm going to tell you. And there you go. Now, you don't have to do both feet in one day. Or all four. <laughs> so I'm going to leave him with this for today and do this video and then I will clean up that other foot and do it tomorrow. Ain't gonna kill him. But it might kill me to do it. So, you know, if you're a young girl, everything works good. But sometimes when you're old like me, 64, uh, one foot a day is enough. Okay, so let's take a look at that foot. All right. Well, you can see how more of that heel needs to come in. See, and you can see how I beveled it. Not meaning to, but actually it might turn on to a good thing. I don't know. I think so. Um, from not holding my rafts flat and straight. Either way, I would have beveled the wall. So maybe it'll turn out for good. Maybe I'll learn something from that that I can apply 
Um, we'll look at this in a couple weeks and see what see what's up. Okay, let's look at the front. Looking pretty good. This other side, this lateral side out here, used to be really um, splayed out over there. Okay, pick it up. Come on. Okay, so that. Just a minute. Okay, that is a clean foot there. Okay, stand up. There you go. All right. Okay, so this is not a finished foot, and every time I trim, I learn something. Um, you know, it's not finished. Uh, the heels are still being restored. What I am really super happy about is the very asymmetrical side has uh, come in, and now the sides are pretty much symmetrical. So, very happy about that. So, anyway, uh, this is a corrective trim and a maintenance trim. And very happy with what is going on with this foot. Uh, this side was very very bulged out and now it's coming in so good deal so each time I do a trim I'm trying to set the foot up to uh, grow and to expand and to be restored to where I'm wanting it to go you may not have as much sole as I had in this foot you may not have well chances are you won't or you may have too much soul who knows um, but this is just what I'm doing for this horse in this particular case and trying to restore him giving him an anatomically correct foot and so I'm real happy with where we're at right now from where we've come so thank you for watching and just remember there's a lot more to learn this is just an example the mapping is pretty standard uh, and the trim is pretty pretty standard trim but you kind of have to deal with the sole in different ways I have a lot of sole and a lot of sole ridge to work with and as you saw concavity in the bowl and so um, you may you will not want to maybe rasp into the soul like what I did once you get soul like what I have you have to learn to manage it see it's a whole different ball game then first you don't have any soul then you get all this soul now you have to learn to manage it properly okay so thank you for watching and happy trimming